That's just before first light on the 6th of June, 1944. Allied forces are about to launch Operation Overlord, the invasion of Hitler's Europe. The Germans have known for weeks that this was about to happen, but not exactly where or when. With the first wave of the British invasion fleet approaching Sword Beach. There are dozens of infantry and tank landing craft, support ships and warships of the Royal Navy which begin to shell the German defences. Each ship has selected targets. The barrage continues until the assault parties have landed. Amongst these are Sherman tanks of the 13th 18th Hussars, fitted with chain flails which clear the beach of mines. The Staffordshire Yeomanry land in their Shermans at 10.30. Luckily, there's surprisingly little opposition on Sword Beach. But with a virtual traffic jam, it's an hour before they can use one of the exits marked earlier by Major Tom Gardner, the Yeomanry Beachmaster. To avoid further congestion immediately inland, the commanding officer, Lieutenant Colonel Jim Eady, decides to bypass the main assembly point south of Hermonville and move further inland. He broadcasts a general call on the regimental wireless net. Hello, all stations, Fox. Move immediately to crossroads 500 metres south of Mallard and take up defensive positions. Fox 1 to southeast. Fox 2 to southwest. Fox 3 and other subunits on Charlie Love. The Yeomanry presses inland towards perrier sur le don and Caen, one of the Allies' first major objectives. Their left flank had been secured at first light by airborne troops who landed by glider and captured the bridges over the Caen Canal and the River Orne, which became known as the Battle for Pegasus Bridge. C Squadron, having first seized the high ground overlooking perrier sur le don were then ordered right forward to support the King's Shropshire Light Infantry in clearing Le Bisset Wood. Two troops managed to negotiate a large natural anti-tank obstacle and worked their way into the wood itself. Colonel Eady had previously appreciated that German panzers would counter-attack out of Caen and drive around into his right flank. Each squadron was therefore placed in concealed positions to the west of Bieville and Beauville. He was proved right. Captain Dennis Manning, reconnaissance troop leader, was the first to see German tanks at 1600 hours. Hello, Fox 6. Contact. Enemy tanks advancing on our position from area 912570 and on track to the Long Dell. Over. A savage tank versus tank battle ensued. Sergeant Joyce of A Squadron, hull down near Trig Point 61, knocked out three enemy tanks before they could retreat into cover. By dusk, the Yeomanry had advanced eight kilometers inland and were firmly established on high ground. This momentous day had gone extremely well with only a few losses. But this was only the opening phase of the main battle for Caen, which was not won for a further month. Up to the expectations of all well-informed people goes the Battle of Normandy. When these pictures were taken, the Allies were still without the port of Cherbourg. The feat of putting ashore a large army, tanks, guns and transport of all kinds, is stupendous beyond anything in warfare hitherto. Reinforcements continue to pour over the channel. In men and material, the Allies vastly outweigh the enemy. Complete conquest of the Cherbourg Peninsula proceeds according to plan. Huge pontoons enabled lorries to be brought over in ships too heavy to beach in shallow water. The sands were converted to good roads by steel runways. Perhaps all this was not so good as a large port, but it was an excellent substitute. A foretaste of the general liberation of France was sampled in the old town of Bayeux, the first place of any size captured by the Allies. The people were addressed by a representative of the fighting French who told them that before long the enemy would be completely expelled from France. Deliverance has come so suddenly to Normandy after so long a wait that the people are realizing only slowly that the nightmare years of occupation are over.